40 reporters and 43,000 people watching this shit right now. Doing my show, you know, 
only a few hour door is this. And, you know, I'm, 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 I'm now standing right there and sort of looks like a burned out room as a dumpster fire is put out. But that atmosphere is sort of juvenile atmosphere the next night. Similar atmosphere that turned a little, uh, a little tighter as the night went on and ended there were some there was some moving of area stores. I'm looking at one right now, just this little uh, few hundred yards from the QT. Now that I think was probably part of what has that and the images of the local media. You gotta understand the way that's being perceived here. Uh, this is a this is a place where law and order politics are deep in which every politician at the local level, at the county, at the state level has not being self elected in a small part on law and order. Um, images of, you know, broken windows. And so they've decided fairly that they're not going to tolerate, they're going to bring the boot down. Now, in terms of the actual event that participated in the response tonight, a whole bunch of squad cars going up right now. Uh, in terms of the actual event that participated in tonight's response, I have seen the same report you've seen the county claim up, but I have to see no independent verification from any reporters as to that fact. I've seen no reporters there on the ground saying they were eyewitnesses to um, either Molotov cocktails or or shots being fired in previous nights when those alleg when those allegations or claims were made by county police. Now a number of officers getting out at large assault weapons at times, riot gear. Uh, about three squad cars pulling up. They're getting the ride here out of the back of the car. That's what you're seeing right now? Yeah, that's what we're seeing right now. Um, we have, we are, we are trying to stream this. We'll see if we can get this up into the control room for, for, for you. Um, we've, got, we've got some kind of standoff up down the road, but they've, they've pushed us back so far. Um, it, it's a little hard to see what exactly is happening. But the, in terms of so, so in terms of the micro event, what led to the the the, the, the tear gas and the yellow ash tonight? That that comes from front of the In the broader sense of what the kind of strategic posture of the police here has been, there was clearly a shift. There was a shift towards very heavy-handed militarized tactics to shift away from that towards a very community police model, a sort of festival celebration here. And then I think after uh, after the rooting, the looting that it happened Friday night, which I should know from everyone on the ground, is a very tiny number of people often stopped or interrupted by protesters and bring themselves in front of the stores in question. There's a lot of outrage and frustration with that looting here locally, but in the wake of that, generally a, a much more aggressive posture uh, uh, in, in, in the last two nights, last night and then again tonight, and again last night, the standoff, remember, was about the actual curfew deadline. There's about 140 or 50 people wearing reports who did not want to back down, basically sort of smack the cylinder to the end you get the sense, Chris, that this, that this crowd, of, as it's been described, is mostly very young people, mostly young men. Is it your sense that there is an, any kind of an organization to them? Like, is there a leader? Is there some kind of hierarchy? Or is it just chaos? Uh, I, I can't answer that because I don't see the people right now uh, that, are, that are in question. Uh, I think when I was here uh, uh, on previous nights, it was a combination of organization. I mean, you're talking about hundreds and thousands of people in the community kind of coming through at different times. You do have some leaders. You've got a professor named Stephen Bradley who's been doing some organizing that we spoke to. You've got some, you've got some youth ministers and, and so forth. Um, and, they, and of course, Antonio French, who's a, a, a African American alderman from St. Louis, has been here since the first night. He's been trying to exercise a lot of kind of community control and discipline. He's been tweeting. He's been having conversations with protesters about trying to, I, I think, he, his, his opinion was with respect to Turkey last night. But again, you know, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people. There's, you know, 22,000 people. Let's go to that. We, we, but, uh, we spoke with Alderman French a little earlier, and he said exactly what you just described. And in fact, he was kind of voicing his disappointment that, uh, that, that there weren't enough grown-ups in the crowd to really organize the young people. And, and he felt that the, what, what they're doing is, is, in my sense of what he's saying, is, is uh, obviously counterproductive to what they are out there demonstrating uh, during the day over. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's obviously, there's, there's, look, this is not, you know, there's a lot of folks out here, a lot of, a lot, and a lot of frustration of people coming from all different places, um, uh, on the political spectrum, all different places, in terms of their feeling of help with law enforcement, um, and so, there's, you know, you know, no one, no one, you know, it's not a, it's not a, it's a, it's a sort of organization that's more anyone's elected leader or anything that's sort of making any kind of representative dish. It's people on the street, some people on the street want calm and justice and a small number of people in the street I think want to smash up and uh, some people in the street want conversations <laughs> with police whether those uh, conversations are, are essentially
potentially just not violent physical disobedience or staring them down or other things. But again, the, 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 the equation to remember here is you've got a thousand people um, and, they're, and, and, it, it, and it takes one of those to, to throw a bottle, as, as, which, was, which was allegedly the precipitating event Thursday night. You know, there's a thousand people or 200 people or 150 people. It's one, it takes one person to throw a bottle to get the kind of, you know, really intense force or response we're seeing. You know, that, <laughs> there's got to be a, there's got to be some way to police this situation that is neither, you know, that is neither chaos, that is not the, the, the pictures that we're seeing now, including the account of an eight-year-old boy tear gas. Okay, Chris Hayes, we're going to let you go because I know you need to gather more information. Thank you for spending so much time with us and good luck out there. Uh, let's go to NBC's Mark Potter, who I saw just a few minutes ago. I know that you're out there on the scene. I'm not sure if you're joining us on the phone or on camera, but can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm off camera. Okay. Uh, because of a, a, a satellite delay of a, about five seconds, so it's easier to do it this way. Okay. Can you see the thing with the officer line here? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. 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 The shopping center parking lot, that line is serving as a command center for uh, many of the police agencies that are here. About an hour and a half ago, there was a big story of activity after there was a report of shooting down at the protest zone, and then there was... Shots from the captain, from the captain on the live stream that shots were fired. So now we have a push of the police line 